What's up, Sign Folk? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. Uh, got some interesting uh, projects I got going on here. Uh, as many pretty much that follow me, you know that I've been downsizing. Um, I got rid of uh, obviously the big uh, Q54 uh, Graftech 8600 and I got rid of the Muto because it had a blown head. Um, in the um, process of downsizing, uh, one of the things that I still needed was a 24 inch vinyl cutter and stumbling across marketplace and looking for all these, um, I guess, newer, less expensive, uh, vinyl cutters. I stumbled across this, uh, 24 inch gem here. It is a GCC Panther rebranded vinyl express GRC 61, 24 inch uh, vinyl cutter, uh, servo motors, uh, digital control. Although this thing is 20 years old, I'm um, pretty sure I can make it work, but uh, stay tuned and we're going to get it plugged up and see if we can uh, make this baby uh, do what we need to do. All right, so in buying old vinyl cutters, there is a ton of value in these older machines. Um, a lot of these less expensive um, vinyl cutters that are coming out today in today's market are the stepper motor. Um, and with all due respect, like I said, there's a time and a place for them. They're great for beginning and learning. Um, but being in this industry for as long as I have been in it, I know that a digitally controlled servo uh, vinyl cutter is pretty much the way to go. This is probably going to be my last 24 inch vinyl cutter. Um, I still have the uh, the smaller Graftech uh, that is a CE40, uh, CE6000-40, it's a 15 inch cutter. Um, that pretty much just exclusively cuts vinyl on the edge. Um, it works really, really well, but again, the downfall is it's only 15 inches wide. Um, as you can see, I still have a plethora of 24 inch uh, vinyl that is still on my shelves that I still need to cut. In the instance that, uh, you know, you can't panel some of the uh, bigger jobs that I do, I don't even consider them bigger jobs anymore, but in the instance that I need to cut something 24 inches wide, because I still have 24 inch vinyl, um, I stumbled across, like I said, I I could have spent thousands on a new Roland or a Graftech or a Suma, whatever it may be, but um, I had one of these cutters before, like I said, and it's probably been about 15, 20 years since I had one of these older vinyl cutters. Now, the downfall to the one that I bought is um, it has parallel and serial ports. There is no USB port to connect this to. Let me go around to the other side here. Um, so, like I said, you have your power switch, a little three amp fuse, and your standard um, power supply uh, three plug uh, for power. So, in Flexi, uh, which is the beautiful thing of Flexi, is I can actually um, hook this cutter up uh, through serial port. And uh, it does take some finagling. Like I said, it's kind of old school, but I am kind of old. I've been in this for 25 years, and this is one of the things that I pretty much started off with. So, uh, so I'm sorry. It is not a GRC61. It is a JR61. Again, this is a rebranded cutter from GCC. <laughs> Um, if you don't know who GCC is, uh, GCC is a big manufacturer. Um, they do quality uh, plotters as well. I think uh, it's like their Titan brand. I know a lot of people refer to them as U.S. Cutter, but um, majority of those cutters, those GCC cutters, um, uh, from U.S. Cutter actually come from GCC and are rebranded. And that's pretty much what Sign Warehouse has done for years and years and years. They get a manufacturer, they rebrand them, they put their firmware in it, and they just rebrand them as their own cutters. Uh, and absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, these cutters still, um, you can still get parts for them, um, but, you know, for, for the most part, uh, the blade holders are rolling. Uh, the blades themselves are rolling. So, uh, you know, getting parts availability, if you know what you're looking for on these old cutters, like I said, these things can be a great value. Like I said, I paid 80 bucks for this thing. Uh, the downfall was, like I said, I got the, I did not get a stand, but I did get the uh, vinyl holders. This is a, uh, this is a stand that uh, the cutter actually sits on, um, and this is one of the media rollers. That's one of the downfalls to buying stuff used. I have yet to locate another roll holder, um, but I'm just going to have to improvise. So this is a belt-driven servo 
um, friction feed. Um, it is a, um, it doesn't have any kind of optical, uh, registration mark, but I don't need that. Not for what I'm doing. Um, the controls I'm fairly familiar with. Um, this is your media holder. You put your media up, you put your media down. Um, but the big, the big thing is, uh, the, uh, communication ports. So you have your serial port and you have your parallel port. I'm going to be using uh, parallel port because, uh, that's pretty much the way that I've always done. So you have your basic components when you're working with stuff like this. Now, um, doing a little bit of digging and research, you have to find a, uh, a USB uh, serial adapter. And I went from the one with Keyspan, and I'll put the link down in the description for you if, if you guys need to find it. Now, there are other um, serial adapters that may or may not work. I didn't want to take the chance. I spent 30 bucks on this one, which is a drop in the bucket. You can spend 10 to 12, $15 on maybe some of the other ones. But from what I read and what I've understood, this one will work regardless. So along with the USB serial adapter, we have our power cord. And then I have my uh, serial um, cable that, fortunately, because I don't let anything go, I had these sitting down in a box. And I have my serial adapter and it has two different plugs on it. So I have, I have one that will attach to the serial adapter, which is this size. So this will actually attach in here. And then this is my USB that will plug into my computer. And then this end part will plug into the plotter. So now the next thing to do is we go ahead and we get some power to the cutter, um, get in flexi and hopefully we can get all this stuff configured. So let's, uh, let's get to plugging some stuff up. Okay, so we made all of our connections. Uh, we have power to the plotter. Um, I plugged in the 28 pin serial um, port to the cutter. Um, on the other end of that is the nine pin connector that attaches to the USB serial adapter. On the other end of that is just a standard USB port that plugs directly into the computer. Next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, go into Flexi and configure a cutter, find the appropriate profile uh, to see if we can start sending commands to this. So let's see if it'll fire up and let's see if it'll cut something. Alrighty, here we go. Let's go ahead and turn some power on and let's see if we can't get some, some well, that's always a good sign. Place media and then lower down the lever. I guess it'd be a good idea to put some vinyl in there just to go through the next process. Ooh, let's see here. Let's try, let's try edge. Well, that's a good sign. Okay, so we have information. The LCD seems good. Um, let's go ahead and get over to Flexi and see if uh, I already have a tab ready to go. Um, let's see if we can't get some communication. One other thing that I'm going to note, like I said, on some of the older computers, um, you may have to uh, install some drivers. Uh, luckily, uh, the Keyspan uh, USB adapter does include a disk, if you all understand and remember what that is, um, of drivers in the event that you need it. Um, because it is an older version, uh, not sure when it dates to, but uh, I've got it. Generally, Windows will recognize that device when you plug it in and it will automatically configure. One of the big problems that I found when you um, have multiple USB ports is you don't know which one is which. It doesn't necessarily tell you exactly um, what this port is or what that port is. Sometimes that takes a little bit of process of elimination and you have to do your own diligence trying to find that stuff. 
one of the things that we have to do is we have to go to our control panel and we have to look at our hardware and sound then we have to go to our devices device manager now device manager will open up this little tab here and these are all of your um, devices that are on your computer and the one that I'm looking for is I'm not looking for COM ports and LS uh, or LPT COM ports is your serial LPT is your printer port but what I'm looking for is this universal serial bus controllers um, one way to decipher how you get that information is uh, by plugging in um, uh, typically I will take a screenshot of this information and I will save it to paint and then I will unplug or plug the new device back in and seeing where the um, the, the variance in what adapters have joined uh, you can then determine where that device is actually located so for instance let's see here let me unplug and of course it reset the view let's go ahead and plug it back in it'll reset again and so there are our adapters now the one I know specifically is this key span adapter right here this is the one that we're using to connect to the cutter and what I want to do is I want to look at the properties and in the properties it'll tell you the location port 008 hub 0004 um, the driver is already installed I already went through all these details before making this video to make sure this would actually work so when you go into flexi the thing that we have to remember are those numbers and in flexi this says vinyl express jaguar jg61 at com4 and we want to look in there and change that port now when we get into the port because it is actually a usb adapter but it is communicating by serial and you have to keep that in mind like i said so what you're looking for is the actual serial port if you have a serial port on your computer you don't need to go through all this but if you're connecting by usb and that's your only option then this usb adapter will allow you to use this cutter with the serial connection so what we found out was this adapter is on com4 and that's what it is set to you have to make sure uh, your bits per second data bits parity stop bits flow control and all that other good stuff uh, that's going to vary by computer but for the most part you can pretty much follow uh, all of these settings and it should work or at least establish some sort of connection um, so I think that we have this all ready to go let's pull flexi up and let's try to cut something so we have hello world now the next thing that we have to do is we have to go up here to our cutter tab and then I have my Jaguar GC61 on COM4 that looks good so let's go ahead and send this and let's see what happens so I can tell you that the cutter's cutting tell you that the speed is at 15 the force is at 3.87 and it seems to be cutting fine alrighty so we have our pole size working let's go back in here and show you what we did so in the configuration where we go change port and flow control is designated by the hardware which means that it would get information from the cutter to send back to flexi so in your initial uh, setup it may give you none but you want to select hardware click apply click OK and when you get to your job properties and now when you click on pole size it should return the media width 
21.741. So that's one helpful little thing. Because polling size, actually, uh, although we do measure um, the machine telling the software uh, how much material that you have, that way you can rotate it, flip it, and all that other good stuff. So that's another good little point that we need to point out. All right, so the plotter works. Um, let me give you a little bit of insight. So yes, this cutter is using a, a serial connection. Is it as fast as USB? Absolutely not. Um, there are a lot of limitations to doing things like this. Now we're all used to using faster pieces of equipment. Um, does, does this cutter compare to the uh, CE uh, 6000 or the old GraphTech? Absolutely not. Um, this cutter is very limited in the speed that it can run. And one of the big, uh, one of the big reasons is the way that it communicates. So the serial is not near as fast as what USB is. So on the other side of things, what I failed to mention was the, uh, the option to get to the, some of these parameters. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to function. I'll see if I can't scroll through some of the stuff without screwing it up. So we want set communication. When you get to set communication, hopefully you can see that. And this is where you get the information that, that will tell Flexi. So we're at 9600, uh, none, um, 8.1. Uh, I'm not sure what the P means, but these are the settings that you need to put in flexi when you do your drop down your ports that's where you get that information from and with that information correct you can then go and use the interactive features that are within flexi so by selecting this we go up to the cut uh i don't even know where it is now okay so we were able to use the pole size which is very very convenient and you can also now use the interactive show me feature that i was just referring to so that's how you get that stuff to work um, you'll still have all your other options in here um, your advance after plot for some reason does not work on this cutter um, it will not go back to the uh, advanced part. It will actually step up at the very end. Um, so when it actually goes through and it cuts, it should go back to the point of origin up here. But for whatever reason, it goes back to this origin. I uh, still got to figure that one out. So uh, when you're setting these things up, like I said, instead of using these controls um, in edit, um, all this is overridden and it just sends the information um, to the cutter. Your speed, your force, all of that is set by hardware, as I showed in the other tab, directly on the cutter. Alrighty, so there you have it. A 20 year old vinyl cutter that still works in today's technical age. Uh, still got a couple settings that I need to go through. I think we can probably work our way through some of that stuff, but there you go. Keep your eyes peeled for those good bargains, guys. Like I said, serial parallel port. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. A good digital servo motor plotter. If they're out there, go ahead and snatch them up. For 80 bucks, you can't go wrong. The things will last forever. So until then, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If uh, y'all made it to the end of the video, I got a special request. Um, I don't know how many of these old plotters are out there, but uh, they came with these media holders. And I have scoured eBay and the internet looking for one. If anyone out there, one of my subscribers has one of these rollers you're willing to sell me, hit me up. iCandySigns at gmail.com.